Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today I'm doing this Overwatch League players GOAT greatest of all time bracket thing that's been going around. Um, I've been wanting to do it for a little bit, I've thought about streaming it, but I'm just going to sit down, I'm going to record this here in kind of chunks, just let you guys enjoy this video. It's going to be a long one, so no issues if you skim through it or skip through it, but I'm doing the entire bracket, I'm doing all... Um, 400 however many players there are included in this one the first round there's not enough players to fill out the whole thing as you can see it's rounds of 512 there's only about 400 something players so the way this is going to work is i am just going to um go through this first round on my own i'll record some of the really cool key matchups that come up um, but a lot of them are going to be stuff like this choice they won versus false or even one player with an empty opponent um things like that but i don't think this first round is going to be particularly interesting so I'll, I'll record some of the highlights for you and you can check them out as we go um, but like this first round obviously i'm going to go with choice a1 but we'll kick back with the full rounds of 256 and narrow down from some of the not as great players as we go uh but first enjoy some of the highlights from this first round as some of these really interesting matchups come up uh so yeah see you in a little bit with my live go through of this uh, little bracket thing this is like the world's cruelest first round matchup because both of these players should be in probably the second like the they should probably make it to like the third round this is cruel this is actually one of the worst rounds i've ever seen but i'm gonna i have to go with fury because fury to me is one of the greatest tank players of all time i think is phenomenal amon was great love amon but like i have to go with fury but that's cruel that's really really cruel shout out to raucous I loved Raucous. I think Raucous was overly hated during his time in the Overwatch League. I would have made him potentially move on to the next round, depending on what the matchup was. But he can't be Kai. You know, Kai has been phenomenal every year he's been in the Overwatch League. The KSP days, the Kai days, he's been really, really good. So obviously I'm going to pick Kai here. But Raucous got so much hate, especially for when he made 2019 Team USA. And I would argue that they won. They would not have won without Raucous. Um, if they had any other flex support, I don't think they would have won. So, shout out to Kai, uh, for how good he's been. Shout out to Rockus for his career, but obviously Kai, better player here. Gotta, gotta pick him. I'm so, so, so sorry to all of the Gangnam Jin fans out there, but after the past, on a two, maybe even three seasons of Gangnam Jin being so mid, Neptuno will forever be in my heart, my favorite main support player in the Overwatch League. So, Neptuno, dub. This one's really hard because I feel so bad for Vigilante as a player because he just hasn't gotten a lot of time. He joined, you know, he came of age late on Washington. Hasn't played a lot on Atlanta this year because of just how good uh, Fielder is. Landon's been a really good part of London. He's been a big part of why they've been successful. I think Vigilante is probably the better player between Landon and Vigilante. But you consider what they've done in the league, the things that they've actually done as players since joining the league. I think Landon's had a lot more impact on his team, on London, uh, than unfortunately Vigilante has. So as much as any Vigilante, the better player, and you have to go in terms of career uh, with Landon. This is unfair. This, this right here is unfair. How do you give me both fearless and happy against each other like this? I don't like this, all right? This is, this is mean, all right? Neither of these players deserve to be eliminated this early. I have to go with Fearless, because I think Fearless is definitively the better player, has had the better career than Happy. But Happy's also a phenomenal player, he's been so good throughout his time in the Overwatch League. The the, the fact that he isn't going to be able to move on here, absurd. Uh, this bracket stinks. So I'm going to break the fourth wall a little bit and tell you guys, this is the second time that I've done, that I've tried to start this video. Um, actually, it's the third time, but the second time doesn't count. Uh... And this is the second time that Ants is getting put into terrible matchups with literal legends of Overwatch. Look, Ants has had a great career. Season 3, San Francisco is phenomenal. He only played about half the year in both Season 4 and Season 5. So he only really has two seasons under his belt fully. Gesture, two-time Grand Finalist in Season 1 and in Season 3. Won it in Season 1. Was a phenomenal player. Was super versatile. Was able to play pretty much everything. Gesture's phenomenal. The fact that he's not included here as a coach on New York is kind of funny because he was a coach for New York. Um, it's like, I have to go gesture over Ants, but Ants keeps getting the worst matchups imaginable. He is the most unlucky player here, and it's unfortunate. 
I'm really annoyed. I just had a matchup where Zushu went up against nobody, and so he automatically has to move on. But now I have to eliminate Dia, who is unironically one of the best players that Chinese Overwatch has ever produced. Because he's going up against Hanbin, who's one of the greatest players ever. Come on, this bracket is unfair. Oh, this one hurts me. This one hurts me a lot. I really like Hydron as a player. I'm a OG New York Excelsior fan. I think Animo is a very good player for that team. Um, they do have a little bit of overlap on Season 5 Florida. Obviously, they played together um, for a season. But this one hurts me. This one hurts my soul a lot. Because I don't want to eliminate either of these players this round. Um... I have to go Animo, which might maybe is a hot take. I don't know. I think Animo is a better player um, in terms of just like what he contributed to. He was on a very good New York team for the first three years. Um, Hydron's been good. Uh, he's been one of the better players in his teams, but I will say Animo. But eliminating Hydron like that, that hurts. I mean, what the hell is this? What? What is this? Really? I hate this one. I really hate this one. How do you give me, like, Lenny time versus Mecco? This is so rough. I love Sugar Free. He's done a lot. You know that if you saw my awards video. But, like, Mecco was arguably the best tank player in the league for Season 1. Still among the best in Season 2 and Season 3. He was so good. He robbed people in broad daylight uh in terms of just how much money he got paid so i have to go with him but sugar free i love sugar free i don't want to be i don't have recency bias too much but like mecco was really good for a long time uh unfortunate that sugar free has to get eliminated this way this is another cruel one so so cruel teammates for a little bit of time in season three hawksall is one of the best players we've ever seen in the world um fissure was one of the best tank players in the world in season one we didn't get to see a lot in Season 2 or Season 3. Really had one really great season. but was a, a long season. But Hawksaw was phenomenal in Goats. His Genji was phenomenal in Season 3 when we got to see it then as well. So I definitely have to go Hawksaw here. But Fisher was so good during his time in, in the league. Um, I'm saddened that we have to get rid of him this early. Because, uh, yeah, he was good. He was, a, he was one of the best players. He was an MVP runner-up in the first season uh, when he was with the Gladiators. He was really, really good. But Hawksaw is phenomenal. I'm crying. I'm absolutely crying because I love Bernard. Obviously, just just joined the Houston Outlaws for the playoffs. Bernard's one of the best. I think Bernard's one of the most underrated players in the history of the league. I think he's so good. But he's up against Joe Yovin. <laughs> like, Joe Yovin literally was the best player in the world, um, arguably for a time when he was on the shock. He won a grand finals MVP. He was so good. He's a, he's a legend of the game. Bernard cannot be better than Choyobin. But dang it, Bernard was phenomenal. He was so good. He was the best player in that London team in 2020. He was one of the most consistent pieces of that Spark roster. I'm upset. All right, we made it. This is the last matchup of the first round. After this, we get into the second round. There's a lot of players I don't actually remember clicking at any point in time. So I'm concerned a little bit about that, but... Here we go. We're going to go into the main round. I'm picking Friday over quarter, quarter main. There we go. All right. MN3 versus Erster. First one here. Erster had a very good year. Season 2 with Atlanta, but his last two years, not great. MN3 uh, is who I'm going to pick here. Seagull versus Nico. Yes, if you're wondering, these are all players who I had to choose uh, in some form or another. Seagull had a good year in Season 1. It wasn't amazing. I think he's done more... Um, for Overwatch as a whole, but Nico had, had two good years on Paris, so we'll go with Nico. Michelle and QOQ. I thought QOQ was very good for the Spark in um, 2020. I'm shocked they didn't bring him back. They brought in Bernard, who I thought was a better player anyway, so it is what it is. Um, Michelle, I think, had a better career, but even still, his was not amazing. <sighs> this is the worst matchup I could have ever gotten. Spree versus Hyonu. I, mean, I have to go Spree. Spree was around for longer, but neither of them did anything. Uh, <laughs> I had to... Fun. Sonjun. So here's how I need people to understand about Sonjun. Sonjun played, like, what? Like, a few maps <laughs> this year. Um, I don't even remember who... He was up against someone I don't think played a game, which is why I had to pick him. 
um, Juby, even though Juby got benched by Jake. Um, Jay Hong versus KSF. I am screaming. I am so mad. I love KSF. I am the world's biggest KSF defender. I think KSF got a bad rap during his time in the Valley in Season 1. And I think we saw how good he was in Season 3. I wish he played more in Season 4 um, Outlaws. Jay Hong was a legend of the game. I don't think he was as great in the Overwatch League as what you would have expected from him based on his um, career pre-Overwatch League. He definitely was more successful in the league, though. He made the playoffs in Season 2. Um, we didn't really get to see a lot of him in Season 3. Ah, uh, actually, KSF was on a... Like, that 2020 Valiant team was very good. He was a good part of that when, when Kai was there, KSP. Um, Outlaws were good in Season 4, though he wasn't really a starter on that team. I think you have to go Jay Hong. It's close. You know, maybe. I like KSF a lot, so I would have loved to pick KSF. But, um, yeah, I think you have to go with Jay Hong. Choi Se Wan. Faith's good, but Choi Se Wan is really, really good. I mean, Vin Dame... Decent main support player, Shu, one of the best players of all time. So, yeah, for sure, going Shu there. Langsa versus Gaga. Gaga. I think both of them are decent, um, but definitely Gaga. I mean, this is a this is a bad matchup. But although, did more in his career, so we're going to go there. Closer versus Mickey. Closer did more uh, during his four years than Mickey ever did. <laughs> Damon. Uh, Damon had a really bad matchup in round one. BQB, definitely the better player. Um He's saying pretty good year this year. Someone, one of the MVPs of the season, arguably top two MVP candidate this year for sure. Going that way. Landon versus Shui. Sorry, Shui. Landon for sure that one. Sparker over King, absolutely. Don't need to explain that one very much. Boombox over Renko. Boombox has had a good year his first three years in the season. Oh, this one hurts me. This one hurts me a lot. I like Neptuno a lot. Obviously, I, I, I talked about him before. Um, Alarm was so good during his two years. Obviously, unfortunately, short career for, for Alarm, but absolutely one of the best flex sports in the league uh, during his time. Proper versus Jen. I mean, Janice was awful. Uh, the fact that he made it to the second round is mind-blowing. Uh, Zest versus Iris. Ooh, Zest. Iris. I think that when you... Consider the fact that Zest has been an MVP candidate each of the past two years. I don't necessarily think he should have been, um, but I think he's had a very, very, very good career. I think he's been very good. Iris is one of those players where he's a really consistent player. I think in a lot of matchups, he'd probably win. Zest is, I think, he's a little bit more on average, higher level, much better player. So, yeah, I have to go there. Lee Jigon for sure over Psycho. Um, I don't remember even clicking Lee Jigon before, so... Thankfully, we're seeing players that like actually did stuff. Boink versus Venom. I mean, geez. I mean, neither of these two deserve to move on. But Venom Venom was good. Atlanta was a decent team last year. They had some good runs. Boink never really did much of anything. I'll go Venom. Tracer's really, really good. Lastro for sure. AKM's known for one thing, and it's not a very good thing, unfortunately. Moth, easily over M37. Gushue for sure over Ding, though Ding, obviously, season two, Ding was phenomenal. He was the basically reason why they won some of the games they won in season two, and they won that uh, stage title, but Gushue is an all-time great. Tizzy versus Nene. This is going to be pretty tough. I, I think Tizzy is a tough player because, obviously, Tizzy joined that 2019 Titans roster late in the year because they just needed someone who could play Winston. They needed someone who was a little better on the tank roll. I guess it was a Risa more that he played than anything else. Nene was known for the Nene Grav, which was unfortunate. But I actually thought Nene was good. Nene was a very, very good part of a good New York roster. Wish we could have seen more of him in Season 3. Um, but I'll go Nene over Tizzy for sure. Decay, Super Rich. I mean, Decay for sure. Easy one there. Void versus DM. Oh, 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 oh. They were, they were teammates for a couple years. Uh, but Void's, Void's an all-time great off-tank player, so he's definitely the guy picking there. I mean, this is a... Like, why are both of these players here? Move, who cares? Moving on. Uh, Gesture, for sure, over Nevix. OG over Karayan. Not even a question there. Leave over Fire. Yeah, Fire had to win in, in round one. I don't know how either. Rascal versus Nero. I mean, Rascal's an all-time great player. You think about this three-year run here. He was very, very good. Season two, season three, season four. Nero, a solid player, but I think Rascal for sure was the better player there. Architect for sure over Kodak. 
Potiphon, obviously a very short career, didn't even play a full season, but his time was very, very good in, in the league. Axe didn't really do anything, so definitely Patty fan, um, though. Maybe a hot take. <laughs> Crimzo. Uh, <laughs> easy, Crimzo. <laughs> Moving on. Um, Fury. For sure. Uh, Mech over Repel. Repel never really got to be as good as we, we hoped. Ooh. Ooh. I like RuPaul a lot. Uh, I think his past... I mean, he played all of Season 6. He didn't play all of Season 5. He played like half of it. Um, he's been very, very good and very solid. Fits to me, there was a, a, a stretch in here where he was one of the, the you know top five players at his role. RuPaul might be there. It's tough. Um, I think Fitz deserves the credit. I think Fitz has been very, very good in his career, so we're going there. Bliss has been good in his time in the league. I really like Dreamer. I thought Dreamer was a good player, and he even played Season 6 as a part of Dreamer, so uh, I'm going to go with Dreamer. He had, some, he had some big moments during his time. Hawk, for sure, over Neko. Let's not even think about it too hard. Jonak over Pokvo. Jonak literally won MVP. Monk and Eileen, both very good players. Monk, or Eileen, big contributor in season three in that that win they had in the um, was that the June Joust or the Summer Showdown in 2020. But Monk is a phenomenal flex sport player. Who are you in Hotba? Um, I think if you consider Overwatch League play, you have to go with Hotba. Who are you? A little disappointing on New York. Played decently during his time on Shanghai, especially Season 5 when they had the Genji meta. He was a huge part of their success, but I think as a whole in the Overwatch League, Hoppa was one of the best players. He was so consistent. Played in a lot of different teams. was good. Alter and get out of here. Get out of here. Skewed. For sure. Shout out to Gregory getting into the next round. Lisa Min versus Fixa. I mean, come on now. Lisa Min, I had to pick because... He played someone who I think had never played a game. Like, Takoyaki never played... A, he played, like, two maps. Hawksall, for sure. <laughs> Moving on. Um, I like Krillin. Striker, though, for sure, uh, is the better player. Mag versus Pelican. Oh, poor Mag. Pelican's been an all-time great. Gotta go with Pelican uh, in this one. Chongsik or Defran? Wow. Um, I mean, Chongsik did a little bit more... In the league, Defran was never that good. I also just don't want to move Defran forward. Smurf for sure over Cool Matt. Merit for sure over Nuss. Super for sure over Yaki. Yaki's a good player, obviously, um, but Super, I mean, he's an all time great. He's one of the best that's ever played the game. Hisu over Kellen. I like Kellen a lot. I thought season six, he definitely bounced back quite a lot, um, but Hisu is really good. Really, really good player. Toby and Godsby. I thought Godsby had a good year in Season 2. I don't think he was great beyond that, unfortunately. Um, I thought Toby... I think Toby's one of the all-time kind of great players of Overwatch, so... Shout-out to Toby. I mean, Choi Hyuk went over Cleston for sure. Cleston being in this round is, is an affront to the game. I mean, what? how are, one of, how are either of these two potentially moving forward? I'm going to go Shadowburn because he did more in the league. Um... I mean, geez. Fusions versus Byram. I mean, Fusions for sure, but <laughs> come on now. Ivy versus Alfie. This is a tough one. Ivy, he didn't play all of Season 4 in New York. Um, but Season 2 in Toronto, he was pretty good. Season 3 in Philadelphia, he was really good. Alfie has had two excellent seasons. He's had two arguably like MVP all-star level kind of seasons. So I'm going to go with Alfie. But Ivy, Season 3 Ivy was really, really good. That Fusion roster was so good, and Ivy was a big part of why they were as good as they were. <laughs> I mean, come on now. a tank shouldn't even be here. Poco. Easy Poco. Infernal Poco, too. Look at that. Silk Thread versus Cruz. Come on now. Silk Thread got a free ride to the second round. Same with Coco. Coco also got a free ride to the second round. Uh, Saya player versus FD God. Saya player was so good. FD God was a good player. He was really good in Season 3. He struggled in Season 4. It wasn't awful. He wasn't the reason why Shock struggled that year, but he struggled more. He struggled in Season 6 a lot. Saya player was one of the best Widowmaker performances we've ever seen at times during his career. So, for sure. Oh, man. People are going to hate me today, but Libero's my dude. I like Punk a lot. Punk's a really good player. He's had a good career. Um, his time in Boston was mixed, and it's part of the problem with his career is that he didn't get the full commitment until he got to Vancouver. Very good year in Vancouver. 
Libero was one of the best players on one of the best teams for several years. Even when they tried to kind of bench him several times, it never worked. Um, similar to Punk, they usually do pretty similar players in that regard. Uh, but to me, Libero's highs were so good, man. I'm an all-time... Libero's one of my all-time favorite players. So, like, there's no way I can I can overlook Libero. SBB over Swimmer for sure. Fraggy versus Jake. Yeah, Jake for sure moves on there. Lip. <laughs> Not even a question. <laughs> There's Roshan. Look who made it. KSA was the best player in that Titans roster. Um, shouldn't have even been dropped. I don't know why he was. Kaluz versus Spectra. Dang. Teammates this year. Spectra had a really good year when he joined Toronto, but Kaluz has two seasons under his belt, and he was good in both of them. So, yeah, I'm going to go Kaluz for that one. Bellis Rio over Shredlock for sure. That awful Photoshop job on Shredlock. My God. Car Crush shouldn't even be here. Get out of here, car car. But Doshin versus Krong. I think Krong had one really good season. I think Badoshin also had one really good season. Both of their inaugural seasons, season one for Badoshin, season three for Krong. I think Badoshin, considering he won a grand finals and was one of the contributing parts of that London roster. Krong was good. I think his his was much shorter lived, so I'll go with Badoshin. It's not that far apart though. Um, Mikey was a contributor to that season five shock roster. Logic's very long career, still a very good player. I think he, he deserves it a little bit more just from what he did. <laughs> I mean, pineapple didn't really do much. Don was very good on season four, um, eternal. So we'll go there. Luffy for sure. Over chip saying chip saying being here once again, shouldn't be a thing. Jinmu over Krawi. Um, no real question there. Izayaki for sure over Glister. Uh, nice was okay on Toronto. Luke Mino is... We all know Luke Mino was better than his record ever said, so I'm going to go with Luke Mino because I think he's he's still a very good player. Doha over Gray for sure. Um, IDK over Doge. Dante over Snillo. Muma over Mike Kaylee. Muma being in the, the fact that Muma's making it to the next round is really sad. Like Panker doesn't even have a picture and he moved on because he didn't go up against anybody. Oh. Oh. No. No, no, no. You can't give me Sparkle versus Profit in this round. Both of these players deserve to make it further. What is this? I mean, like, Profit is obviously the pick here. He is one of the greatest players in Overwatch history, Overwatch League, and beyond. Profit's phenomenal. Sparkle is also a great player, and he's been one of the best in, in the league as well. Um, he's he has his highs might be higher than Profit. Um, you know, he may have found more success than Profit in the most recent seasons, but Profit's an all-time great, right? He's a legend of the game. So this hurts. This one hurts me. This stings my soul. To get rid of Sparkle like that. They need seeding in this thing. They need to actually... This can't be random. Alright? I, I know they don't want everyone to have the same bracket. But like, gosh. Gamsu versus Animo. Gamsu was such a fun player to watch. He had three good years. He was a he was a solid main tank player. Animo. More sustained success. A little bit of a longer career. So I'll go Animo. Kai versus Edison teammates in season four um interesting kind of you think about atlanta didn't win any tournaments it, when kai was there um kai never won any tournaments edison won in season five <sighs> this is a tough one i think kai might be the more talented player i think he's probably the the player that's had the, the he's got more flash edison has had a better um career he's had a more successful career so it's it's a tough one here but I, I think just the the fact that edison was a contributing part to dallas's grand finals win in season five I have to go him over kai it's a tough one though i think they're both really good players reiner versus shacks um this is tough reiner only had one season he was really good in season five obviously he struggled in in the junker queen meta but outside of that very good year from him and then with shacks 
his time with the the Valiant, especially season two, he was really really good on that somber role. Didn't get a lot of great times, unfortunately, on that season four London roster. He was good on season five London, um, but I think Reiner just short career, but so good in his one year that I think his his career arguably um, was a, a more kind of complete career, uh, even if he played less. Twilight for sure for Bishu. Uh, that's not even a question. Uh, Gator over Ellie vote. Absolutely. Creative over Stratus. That's an easy one. Um, Mono over Youngjin. Poor Youngjin. The face of the Shang Nine, but Mono absolutely uh, is my pick there. Fearless, the man who eliminated Happy, is going to move on. Stalker, Aim God. Aim God was okay. He he had a he had a decent career. Uh, Stalker's been very good in the two years he's been in the league. So, <laughs> who reg and hip. Oh, man. I'll go Hooray. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Links are for sure over Aztec. That's not even a question. Piggy or Backbone? Oh. That's tough. I feel like Piggy is the face. This is, this is so mean. Piggy is the face of teams that choke. That season four Outlaws roster was started the year very well and kind of fell off. Well, um, then he leaves, goes to the charge. They're the favorites to make it out of the play-ins, and they lose. Charge, season six, don't make it into the midseason madness because they choke. Backbone's been really good. Um, I think Piggy does not do well under pressure. It might not be just him, but it's a bit of a pattern, so I'll go Backbone. Piggy might be the more talented player, but I think Backbone's had a better career. Ultraviolet, for sure, over Friday. <laughs> Violet. <laughs> easy. Easy Violet pick there. Uh, Fleta for sure. I don't want tank Fleta though. Damage Fleta. <laughs> Yo! Carpet. <laughs> Baby Bay. <laughs> Not even a question. Um, Kevster. It's one of the best in the league. Yo! EQ. Custo was good. But Ikuo is really, really good. Like, Fozix, why are you here? Get out of here. Note or Bacon Jack? I mean, Note had a better career. Bacon Jack was an okay player. He was a decent contributor to that Chengdu roster because he was the main hitscan player they had. But Note was very good during his, his time in the league. He was a you know good early player in the league. Uh, Admiral's good, but Space, he's a legend of the game for sure. Moves on there. Sanguinar, let's go! I don't even want to mention the other guy. Sato, let's go! Poor Milan ran. Why? Why is this a matchup? Like, I'm gonna go Becky. That's <laughs> uh, Jimmy for sure. Bonnie was like okay. Didn't even have his coaching career. How come some players have them as coaches and some they don't? It doesn't make sense. Masa, it's all Masa for sure. I liked Masa a lot as a player. Glad he's kicking it in the World Cup too. Jexe over Naga. Naga was good, but but Jexe contributed a lot to some very good teams. Fielder over Bianca, easy, absolutely. Um, ooh, this is a fun one. Sermajed or Nisha? I think I'm gonna go with Sermajed. I think Nisha was very good on on Chengdu. Though, like season five, Chengdu was not very good. Um, Season four was when they were good. That was Leaves MVP year. But Sermon Jed was good on both Florida and Toronto. He was a contributor on both of those teams. Neither of them made it super far, but Sermon Jed was a, a good part of both of those teams. Slime versus Chorong. Chorong. Interesting that they obviously both played for Florida. They Slime arguably had the better kind of peak on season two with Vancouver. He barely played in season three. Um, but I think Chorong's been a phenomenal main sport player. Absolutely deserves to move on here. Chio versus Donghawk. Like, I like Donghawk. Chio's had the better career. Um, two years of, of excellence from him. Mir over Shy. Um, Shy, obviously, Overwatch League career has been better. Miro didn't do a lot in the Overwatch League. Did a lot pre-Overwatch League, which is why he moved on in this one, because he played against someone in in the first round. I don't even remember who it was. Someone who didn't do a lot in the Overwatch League, so I went with someone who at least did a little more outside of the Overwatch League. <laughs> irony versus Zushu! Oh, Irony. 
Getting a free ride into round three. Far away over Blase. Blase was okay. Far away has been pretty good. Um, I liked Molly a lot. Molly was a fun player to watch. Um, that season five kind of hurt his career a lot. Fate, legend of the game. Of course, he's going to move on. Not even a question. Get revenge out of here. Revenge shouldn't even be here. Rhea or Sherfor. Rhea was a good off tank player who never really made a, a mark in any real capacity. Sherfor was very good, um, especially in season one and season two. Rio and Bird Ring. Oh, easily Bird Ring. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> Big Goose or Pine? Ooh! Ooh! This one hurts the soul. Pine, I mean, he didn't play in Season 4 for Dallas. He was on the team, but he never got actually around to playing because of visa issues. But Season 1 Pine, so good uh, whenever he got to play. I think Big Goose has to be the pick here because he actually played all three years very consistently that he was in the league. Um... Pine only played in Season 1 when he, he could play a hitscan here, like Cassidy or Widow. Um, he was just super flashy, and when he got to go on stage, he looked really, really good. Um, I wish we got to see more of Pine, but definitely going to go Big Goose here. As much as it hurts my soul as a New York fan, I think Big Goose had the better career than Pine, so that's who I'm going to go with. Han been over Gargoyle easily. I think Gargoyle is one of the biggest fraud off tanks in league history. I'm sorry, everyone out there who likes Gargoyle. I never thought he was that good. Um, so... There you go. Babel and Roki. I'll go Roki. Roki was a little more consistent in the way he played. Flora and Kariv. You all know I'm the world's biggest Flora defender, but Kariv had a better career. Um, so there we go. On to the next round. We're narrowing it down now. We're getting we're getting more we're getting closer to the end. Alright, Bird Ring versus Kalios. For sure it's Bird Ring. For sure. Super first striker. Wow. This is tough. Um, you know, obviously, longevity, you have to give it to striker. He played for longer. Super, season one, Super didn't play a lot because he was too young for most of the season, but Super was a huge part of the team's success in GOATS. Played a bit in season three. Um, you know, was played the Roadhog that got them the Grand Finals win. Uh, season 4, I don't even remember what he did Season 4. Season 4 was not a great year for the Shock. Um, Stryker was a contributor on that Season 1 Boston. He was a contributor in the playoffs for Season 2. Grand Finals MVP for Season 3. Um, season 4 was when he retired. Uh, season 5 and Season 6 are just weird years in Stryker's career. This is a, a tough one. Um, to, to, I, I think Super is a very good player who unfortunately did not get to show off the full extent of his talent at the full extent you could on a team that had Smurf on it. Because Smurf Winston was just so much better. Um, and there's so many heroes that he, he played better than Super. But when Super got to play, he was a huge impact piece. Striker is such an odd one because on San Francisco he was very good, especially I think season three. Um, because 2020 the team was really, really good, and Striker was a huge part of that team's success that year. Um, and when he got to play in season two and season one, uh, obviously so long in Boston, he was very good as well. This might be a controversial take. Um, this might be a hot take, but I think as a whole. When you look at their career in the Overwatch League, I think Stryker might be the better player. Super had a lot of very, very good moments, very high highs. I think Super's moment was Season 2. I think he was still a very good player in Seasons 1, 3, and 4. But because Smurf was on the roster, Super just had to split a lot of playtime there. And I think overall, personally, as a whole, I think Smurf's probably the better tank player. Um... So I'm going to go Stryker. Controversial take, I know. Uh, but that's where I'm going. Hanbin, easy. Don't even, have to, don't even have to think about that one. Izayaki and Poco. Uh, Poco's a legend of the game. Obviously, very good player. Um, Izayaki is as well. I think, you know, Izayaki way more successful. Won a grand finals with the Shanghai Dragons. Won several stages. Has won way more than Poco did. Great player in Poco, but Izayaki, moving on. Decay versus Kariv. Technically, Kariv has the more successful career because he won in Season 1 a stage. 
Um, but I think Decay's been the better player in his career. I think we look back at their careers, I think Decay has the higher highs. I mean, this one's interesting. Um, Jay Hong unfortunately beat KSF last round, um, which made me sad. OG only really had like a one really good year, maybe two. Um, Jay Hong, I think, just way better. I think, I don't think Jay Hong was ever bad in the way that OG was uh, late in his career. Fleta over Linkser, for sure. Uh, MM3 versus Chorong. I think. MN3 is a player that is very good and has very high peaks, but I think he's kind of streaky. I don't think he hits his peak as much as you want out of out of him, but when he does, he's really good. Chorong, to me, is so consistent and is such a dominant main sport player that I'm going to go Chorong. They've played, they've been in the league the same amount of time, um, and, and I think you have to go. It, for that reason, I think you just look at their overall career. I think Chorong's done more. Um, Lip over Sanguinar. Sanguinar is great. I love Sanguinar. I'm shocked he's never been back in the league. Get Spree out of here. Finally. Goal. Oh, this one hurts me. These are like my two favorite main tank players of all time. Oh, no. This one's this one's awful. I think, um, look, I think if we're being realistic, I think Mono Season 1 and Season 2 was arguably the best or second best main tank um, across those two seasons. Um, like season one, he was probably, he was one of the best. Fissure was up there as well. Um, season two, obviously Super was very good. Um, but I think Mono was just consistent. He's been very, very good. And I thought he was even good in season three. Season four, Fusion, not as good as you would have wanted them to be. Gushui, super consistent main tank player. One of the, the, the staples of Chinese Overwatch. One of the best parts of the Hangzhou Spark throughout their entire existence. So it's really tough. These are two really good players. I think Mono is more flexible. I think Mono was better on Ryan, better on Orisa. Um, they were pretty comparable on Winston. I think Gushua was probably a little bit better on the Winston. Um, but they were both very, very good. Um, this one's tough. Um, part of Mono's problem is that he hasn't played for two years, and his final season was not amazing. Gushui's been pretty consistent. I think Gushui's, you know, we look at Gushui as a really good Winston player. This year we've seen him play some other stuff too. Uh, I'm sorry, Mono. I'm sorry. I have to go Gushui. It's close, but I think Gushui's probably had the better career. <laughs> Juby versus Anomo. What a, what a matchup. Gator over Shermajed. Yep. Uh, Dreamer and Jake. Uh, I think Jake had the better career. Obviously, like, Season 1 and Season 2. Season 2 Outlaws are not great. Season 1, he was a pretty solid piece. Dreamer didn't play. A lot, I mean, he split a lot of time with Jongu in Season 4. Um, at times. And Season 3, he was good. But I think Jake probably had the better career. He's also just a legend of the game. Masa over Becky. <laughs> Easy. Um, Spark over Logix. I think Logix was a good player, but he never really did much in his career. Sparker did a lot and has done a lot. Um, Closer is an Overwatching champion, but I think he got benched for Nuss in the playoffs, if I remember correctly, which is why he ended up on Dallas in Season 2. Um, Backbone, I think, has had the better career, so I'll go Backbone. Uh, UV over Gregory. Um, Gregory was a good player, but she didn't do as much as you wanted um, from her career. Dante for sure over Chongsik. Um, this is an interesting one. I think I think it's pretty clearly Smurf. I think he's had a better career than Stalker. Stalker's been very good the past couple of years. But Smurf obviously like won the Grand Finals, won the Grand Finals, you know, won, won tournaments in these two seasons, uh, won a tournament this season, you know. I think he had a better career, but Stalker's very good. Um, Ooh, ooh! Space had a good year this year, but Choi Yobin, man, or not this year. His career was very good for Space, but Choi Yobin's definitely the better player. Uh, Merit over Irony, for sure. Um, ooh, hmm. I think season three Sato alone is 
better than what Mir has done with his career. Not not a dig on Mir. I think Mir's never been on a great team, um, so that that hurts. Uh, Michelle over Venom, even though it's really neither of them are phenomenal. Um, ooh, Landon. It's the same argument I made with Landon earlier. Landon contributes more to his team, and his both years he's been in the league, his team has been very good. Jinmu has been up and down, up and down, up and down, but he's done more in his career, so I'm, I'm going to go with Jinmu. Uh, Jexay over Cruz, absolutely. Fitz over Nico, absolutely. Baby Bay over KSA. Um... Pelly over Boombox, for sure. The legends. The, the boys. The NYXL. The dream, season one. Jonak won MVP. I mean, Sabio was very good um, during his time. I think Jonak just had the better career. Um, Reiner is good. Twilight is better. Uh, yeah, Fusions over Muma. I, I never liked Muma that much as a main tank. I thought he was a liability at times. Oh! Oh, God! Lee J. Gon versus Fielder! You're, you're telling me that that Fusions made it to the round of 64 and I have to eliminate either Fielder or Lee J. Gon? Oh, this one's really tough. And I'll tell you why it's it's especially tough. Because I... I tr I'm trying to think about, like, their overall, like, positions in each role. Like, I think Lee Jigon might be the best main support player that the Overwatch League's ever seen. Fielder is one of many great flex sports we've ever seen. Um, I think I am going to give the edge very slightly to Fielder because he won in Paris, he won in Dallas, and he's won in Atlanta. Lee Jae Gon, all three years he was on Shanghai. Shanghai was very good, and he won every year in Shanghai. Um, has not won anything yet in Boston, but there wasn't. There's only one tournament so far since he's joined Boston. He's been very good on Boston, uh, but Fielder has been so. I mean, Fielder is a winner. Every team he plays on, every place he goes. Yes, they've all been good teams. I mean, season three Paris was good. It's probably the weakest team he's played on though. Both these Dallas teams were good. This Atlanta team is really good. This is a really close one. Um, unfortunate the way it, it, it breaks down, but like I said, I think just the fact that Fielder's won so many places, um, and I think he's just been a better player overall. Oh, Chio versus Gesture. Uh, Chio is arguably the best main support player in the two seasons he's been in the league. Um, Gesture is a very good main tank, obviously won a grand finals in, in season one. Chio, grand finals in season five. Uh, and won another tournament. Season 6 won the Mid-Season Madness. Gesture, I believe, has only won in Season 1 tournaments. Uh, didn't win anything in Season 2, and I don't think on Soul he won anything. I'm going to say Chio. It's it's close, but I I don't know if... Ge I, Gesture was very close to being among the best main tanks in the world, especially in Season 1. Um... Chio, I think, is definitively the best in his role and is just such... He, he's been so good since he joined. It's close. This might be recency bias. Gesture was phenomenal as well, but um, I, I think you gotta go Chio there. The Luke Mino run ends. Edison, moving on. Last River, Shy. Shy. Shy's been so good since he joined the league. Uh, Profit. Hawk's good, but but come on now. Moth, yeah. Potiphon had a good, good time, but more successful <laughs> oh oh man oh man you guys are gonna hate me you guys are gonna hate me doha was okay i mean doha barely played in season five season three dallas was a mess season four was the only year that he actually was like good um and i don't even think he played that much uh, we actually we played a lot because he didn't have a hit scan player, and he was good. Uh, but I think Libero is better. <laughs> I love Libero. I'm the, I, I'm gonna get Libero to the finals if I have to. Uh, he won't make it that far, but I would love to. This is a toughie. Um, I think here I'm gonna base it on just what they've done in their career. Like someone's a really good tank player. Like I've said, he's 
borderline MVP candidate for this year. Um, I, mean, I don't know, he may have won by the time you're actually seeing this video. Um, but Void, I mean, Void won the Overwatch League on Shanghai. He was a phenomenal player every year. He's been in the league since the beginning. He's such a good player. Um, no, no shade at someone. A lot of other matchups, someone wins this one. But I think just career-wise, Void said the better career um, than, than someone. It's close, though. Mech over Belsrio, um, for sure. Um, BQB, honestly, over Roki. BQB, Season 3, BQB was very good. Season 4, he struggled quite a bit. In season 2, he didn't have a lot of playtime um, that impressed me. But Roki didn't really play a lot. So there we go. Uh, fearless. Absolutely fearless. Um, Saya player for sure. Uh, who's next? Alarm versus Hotba. This is a tough one. Man, Hotba played so many different teams and honestly was, was a, a, a key component. It was pretty good in all of them. Alarm for two years was one of the best in his role. Um, you know, his career was cut short. Uh, but he, he would have continued to be really good if he was still still around. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Choi Se-won, yeah. Choi Se-won carried games sometimes. Fixa is just okay. This one's interesting. Um, two flex supports, so simil you know, same role, uh, similar kind of look there. I think Bedoshin fell off quite a lot. Uh, obviously, Season 1, very, very good. Season 2, Season 3. And he got benched for creative at the end of season three. Um, Monk, consistently good. So I'm going to go with Monk for this one. Kevy over Sure4. Sure4 had a good year, a good career, but Kester. He's over Envy easily. Get Envy out of here. Hawks all over Khan for sure. Not even really a question there. Proper over Exe. I mean, Proper is one of the best we've ever seen. Um. I like Big Goose a lot. I think you have to go EQO. I think EQO is more successful. EQO had some phenomenal moments in his career, obviously. Um, Shoe over Nene. Um, so, yeah. I, I like EQO a lot. I'm glad that he's he's around in the World Cup, um, which is nice. Uh, you know, Zest is cursed because he plays for the Fusion slash Infernal who've never won anything in their lives. Architect, I mean, he won on the Shock. Um, I don't know why they don't have him listed as a part of season... He joined the Spark in Season 3 during 2020. Because it's during the height of Animal Crossing that he joined. Uh, because that's what they used to announce his move. Um, you know, Architect was never the best player on his teams. So I think Zest has that edge over him. Obviously, Zest never won anything. Architect won the Overwatch League. But I think Zest has just had higher highs. It's close. Um, but I think Zest... Oh... Poor Skewed. Very good player, but Violet, for sure, is the player that's had the better career. Um, shout out to Crimzo. Crimzo's a very good player, and I really like Crimzo. But Funny Astro uh, has had, had the better career, for sure. He's won more. He's, he's been more successful. He's had a lot of... He's been a part of some really good teams. Alfie, absolutely uh, one of the best DPS players in the world. Say what you will about the end of Fury's career. Season 4 Washington, he was not great. Um, I, still th I still thought he was okay. When he rejoined Fusion in Season 5, they had some problems. He didn't play a lot, but I thought his Junker Queen was decent. Uh, but this three-year run for Fury is one of the best runs by any player ever. Season 1 London, Season 2 London, and Season 3 Philly. He was unbelievably good. Um, Kaluja's never even come close to touching that. Uh, so, yeah. Hey! Shout out to Gaga. Jimmy and Note. Wow. This is awful. This this is... One of these two is moving on. Wow. Um, honestly, if I think about their careers as a whole, Jimmy was kind of a disappointment uh, for a lot of his career. I'm going to go with Note. Jimmy was okay. Note had a really good stage uh, early in his career. Toby for this one. Um, that I think he, he moves on for. Carpe versus Rascal. These are two legends of the game. I think Carpe is such a face of the Overwatch League. Like his, the Fusion literally, after Carpe left, they changed their team name. Like there is no Philadelphia Fusion without Carpe. Um, Rascal, obviously, 
two-time champion here. I think he was on London when they won in stage one. He may have been gone already. Coached last year's Dallas Fuel roster. Coached Atlanta. But as a player, very, very good. But to me, Carpe was legendary um, and has a status unlike anybody else. Super close. Both of them should be able to move on, but I think I favor Carpe, uh, just what he did as a, as a player. Leave, for sure. Um, yeah. And Fate. So, we now move on to the round of 64. We've got 32 matchups here. We're flying, man. We're flying. All right, so UV and Michelle. Um, I think Ultraviolet's had a better career. Michelle was never amazing, so... Oh, my my boy, my poor little bird ring has to go up against one of the greatest off-tank players of all time. Um, I, I think there are some people who were, were underrating how good Choi was um, when I've seen some of these lists. Bird ring's really good. Obviously, he's one of the best players that, that we've seen in, in the damage role. Obviously, super successful um, during his time on London, during his time on the Gladiators. Um, but Choi Obin has won... You know, he won in Season 2, he won in Season 3. He was never the problem for that Shock roster. Um, so, I, I think Choi Obin is one of the... The fact that he retired after, when he did, I think, hurts people's perception of him. But in terms of Overwatch 1, he's a GOAT. Uh, for sure. He just doesn't have the, the, the last two seasons. Bird Ring has been good this year, um, but I think Choi Obin is, is the answer here. Zest versus Choi Sewon. Um, they're very similar, I think. I think Choi Sewan's highs are better than Zest's. I think Zest has been on a better team throughout his career, which I think has helped. Uh, but I think as a player, I think Choi Sewan's probably better. Um, I think Zest's career is arguably the better one, so I'm going to give him the edge. But I think Choi Sewan's a bit more talented. Zest has just been in a better position that's helped him succeed a little bit more. Alarm versus Toby. I mean, legend of the game with Toby, he was phenomenal. Um, but I think Alarm's highs were, were better. I think Toby, his four years were very good. Obviously, he coached Dynasty the past couple years. Um, really the only player from Lunatic High uh, that made the jump to the Overwatch League and was very successful. Uh, but, dude, Alarm. Alarm was unbelievably good. Oh, Prophet's just going to clear this bracket, unfortunately. Uh, for anybody he goes up against. And he already eliminated Sparkle. And let me tell you, Sparkle better than Edison. Izayaki versus Chorong. Chorong's good. Izayaki's had more sustained success in his career, so definitely Izayaki. Jexay, Sato. Jexay had some wins, some championships in Season 4. Um, Sato was very good in Season 3 on that Fusion roster. I think these are two kind of similar ones, but I'll go Jexay. I think his career was a little bit better. Ah. Uh, Shoo. <laughs> Easy. Jaehyung versus Fusions. Uh, Jaehyung. I think he had a better overarching career. He's actually making it further than I expected him to. Hanbin or Striker? I like Striker a lot. He eliminated uh, Super um, and is a very good player. Hanbin's better. He, Hanbin would have eliminated Super. If Hanbin's eliminating Super, he's eliminating Striker um, as well. Decay, Twilight. Very good player. So teammates this year. Uh, Twilight won in Season 3. Came very close to winning in Season 2. Was an MVP candidate. Um, yeah. Give me Twilight. And Twilight's a phenomenal player. Chio <laughs> or Jake. Now we're going Chio. We have Mecco versus Fielder. Fielder. He's a winner. Dante versus Gaga. He's Dante. I think Dante may be the best player uh, in terms of his success in the Overwatch League in America. Outside of maybe Super. Uh, Hisu, definitely over Jinmu. I think Hisu's great. I think he's phenomenal. Monk or Sparker? I like Sparker a lot, but I think Monk's career has been... I think the Monk, to me, stands out more. Sparker's been in a very interesting kind of team. You know, Season 4 of London was so bad. 5 and 6 have been good, but he was on such a bad London team. Monk's been a very good part of, of the Hunters and the Spark, so give me give me that. Poor Hawksall. Going against Violet. I mean, Violet obviously wins. Uh, Hoxel's very good, but, you know, Violet. <sighs> Jonak or Merit? There's a lot of Jonak slander out there in the league. There's some people who think that he only had one good year. That's a lie. Jonak was good in Season 1. He was good in Season 2. 
And he was good in season three. Uh, the team was never as good as they were in season one, but Jonak, I don't think was ever the problem for New York. Season four, even, he, he had a pretty good year. Merritt's good, don't get me wrong. Phenomenal player in the modern day. But to me, Jonak, MVP, four very good years in the league. I think you have to go with Jonak as, as the guy here. Smurf over Onimo for sure. Not even really a question there. Shy over Backbone. One of the best hit scans in the league. No! No! Libero! How could you? How could you do this to me? This this bracket just wants me. It's pushing me. It's it's forcing me to tell me how far am I willing to push Libero. And I can't push Libero over Lip. I'm sorry, Libero. I'm sorry. Flood over Masa. Uh, for sure. I just hate that it's Tank Flutter. I'll say it a million times. Oh. God. This is a toughie. I, I don't want people to think I'm a proper hater. Um. Like, I don't think Proper's good. I think Proper's really, really good. Um, but we're going to have a careers in the Overwatch League. Proper's dominance in Season 5 is unlike anything we've ever seen. I think if you want to talk about the best single season any player has ever had in the Overwatch League, Season 5 Proper is probably the answer. Void, longer career, more successful career in terms of winning championships and titles and stuff like that. Proper has nothing under his belt. Didn't win any championships, but he did get a role star and a rookie of the year and an MVP, which some that that void got role stars, um, never got an MVP, never got rookie of the year. But I think as a career, if we're not just considering talent, which I've been very clear in this video that I'm looking at their careers as a whole, um, you know, some of them, you know, maybe weren't super successful, had a lot of talent that carried them. But this is one of those ones where both players are very talented but Void had a much more successful and better career than Proper. So I'm going to go with Void here. Not a dig on Proper. I think Proper is arguably one of the best players we've ever seen in terms of just pure mechanical talent. Uh, and like I said, that season five for him was phenomenal, but Void has had a better career than Proper. I think here, uh, Creative had the better career uh, so far than Saya Player. Saya Player was good, um, but Creative, I think, you know, contributor to all of the teams he's been on. I thought this year was so good for creative. Um, and I think he, he deserves a lot of credit for what he's able to do. Oh, no. Gushway. Oh, Gushway eliminated Mono last round. Now I have to pick the two best players from Chinese Overwatch matching up in the round of 64. Oh, I think Gushway is my favorite player. Um, that the Hangzhou Spark have that they've ever had. I think he's my favorite player to come out of China. But Lee won an MVP and was so good. Um, yes, he had some... His, his first season was not great. In season five, he was not put in a position to succeed as much as you would like. Gushui has been consistently good his whole career. But season four leave, season six leave, unbelievably talented. And you win an MVP, that, that gives me a lot. Um, of, of things to go off of with you. Um, it's close, but I think the fact that they're on the same team now um, helps also push Leave up because I think you could make the argument this year, would Gushui be as good on the team this year if Leave weren't there? It's hard to say. Um, but Leave is unbelievably talented. Um, I love Gushui. I think Leave is a much more flexible player. He's so good on so many different heroes. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with Leave. Neither of them have won any championships, so I think it's easier to, to go with Leave. Dude, Fearless is getting some of the worst matchups ever, man. He's he's really good, and I'm going to go with Fearless in this one. But Pelican is another phenomenal player who I hate to see eliminated this early. Um, I mean, this is a res this is a respectable um, um, place to make it. But Fearless is, um, I mean, he won. He didn't win the V championship on Shanghai, but he won some tournaments. He won the championship on, on Dallas. And maybe he's competing for the championship on Houston this year. They're teammates, but I think Fearless's career has been has been better so yeah give me fearless for this one fits over baby bay close one i think baby bay was good but fits has had a longer career and better uh moth for sure um moth had a pretty pretty easy run here carpe there fury or fate i think as a fan of the league and as a fan of these players i rate fury and his peak better like i said in the last round 
His first three seasons of the, the league, he was unbelievable. He dipped on Washington in his second stint on Philly. He was not nearly as good um, as his first three years. But he was so good in his first three years. But fate, to me, was the backbone of Season 1 Valiant, the backbone of Season 2 Mayhem, and he was on Mayhem in Season 3. I don't know why he's not listed as a part of Mayhem in Season 3. This is a little off. And then, of course, he won the Overwatch League in Season 4 uh, when he moved to the Dragons, and he's been a very, very good player. So I have to go with fate. I love Fury a lot. I think Fury is my favorite off tank player to ever play the game. Um, I thought when he played, he was the best, um, especially his D.Va. Uh, but Fate, his Winston, his ball, his Ryan, his, it was all phenomenal. Astro versus Alpha Yi. Alpha Yi, phenomenal player, arguably the better peaks as a player. Funny Astro, sustained success career-wise, much better. You know, won tournaments as a part of the Gladiators in Season 5. Um, solid career as a whole. Um, so I'm going to go with Astro. He was on that really good Fusion roster as well. EQO versus Kevster. I'm sorry, EQO. Your run ends here. You're a phenomenal player. One of one of the legends of the game, but Kevster is that dude. We're moving into the big wigs now. Round of 32. Top 16. Coming up. Oh, boy. This is where the hard-hitting matchups come in. Uh, Chi over Dante. This is one of the... It's so... Like, Chio is such a, an interesting player because... His career has not been super long, but he is so good. Dante was phenomenal um, throughout his career. That Gladiator season, a little bit of a, of a blemish at times, but Chio, he's been so good. Jack Sabres, Han Benton, come on now. Come on now. It's not even a question. Uh, ooh. Kev Servers, Choi Yobin. I think this is... I think Choi Yobin is the answer here. I mean, he, he's a two-time champion, right? Like, there's not many players who can say that. Kevster obviously has a couple tournament wins, Season 4, Season 5. Um, phenomenal player. But I think Choi Yobin, his career, has been, his career was really, really good. He was one of the best off players in the world. The conversation used to be, is it Choi Yobin, is it Void, is it Fury, right? Um, before Hanbin really kind of jumped onto the stage as one of the best in the league, Choi Yobin was... The, the the guy people were asking about uh, who was the best off tank in the world. Smurf over Ultraviolet. Iziaki over Hisu. I like Hisu a lot. Hisu's a great player. I think uh has had some rough times in his career because the teams have been on. But Iziaki's the guy. All right, Jonak. Sorry, buddy. It's profit time. Love Jonak. Great player. It's profit. Shy or Moth. Moth on the Gladiators did not do a lot, uh, which is unfortunate for him. Um, Shy, phenomenal player during his career. Moth, two-time champion, very good as well. Um, contributor to those teams. But I think Shy is a phenomenal player. Really, really talented. Um, we've never really got to see him fully reach his potential, I think. I think he's still got a lot of kind of room to grow. And who knows what happens with the future of Overwatch in China. I'm, I'm pretty torn on this one. I, if I'm going to go in career, which I think is kind of what I should focus on for, for this one, you got to go Moth. He's the better career. He won two championships. He contributed to both of them quite a lot. Big part of that team's success. His talent may not have been, you know, the peaks that you get with Shy, but I think his career was probably uh, a, a bigger step than Shy. Um, Shy had his moments, of course, like playoffs last year, but. Yeah, I'm going to go with Moth. Carpe versus Zest. Carpe. Zest, good, too short of a career. Carpe, he's one of the legends, man. Twilight or Fielder? Ah. When you get two players that play the same role, it's very tough. Um, because, uh, well, it's, it's tough in a way because... It's nice to have that head-to-head -head comparison of saying, like, they play the same stuff, so who was the more successful player in their career at this role? Um, it's a lot tougher, I think, when you have players in different roles. I rate both of these players very highly. Um, both of them are, are champions. They've both won the Overwatch League. Twilight won it in Season 3. Fielder won it in Season 5. Uh, Fielder has won more tournaments. Um, you know, Twilight won, won on Vancouver, uh, and I believe he won including the playoffs. He won two on San Francisco. Fielder won 
won on Paris. I think he won three on Dallas. Uh, two, three on Dallas. Um, and then he won one on Atlanta. But I think Twilight's a really good player. I like both these players a lot. I think this is one of those really tough ones where you kind of look at where they are. But Twilight was, I think, runner-up in MVP voting season two. Has been consistently a really, really good player. So I think it's it's tough. But I, I personally prefer Twilight as a player. I, I give him a little bit of the edge there. Super, super close. Um, but I'm going to go Twilight there. Fleta over Jay Hong. Uh, Violet over Funny Astro, for sure. Uh, Fate over Fitz. I'm sorry, Fitz. Fate. I mean, he's he's a phenomenal player. <sighs> They're giving me... Lip is on a tear. Because last round he eliminated Libero, and I love Libero, and now Shu might be my favorite player in the league now, and Lip is going to eliminate him in two. Because uh, Lip is unbelievably good. Uh, I love Shu a lot. Phenomenal player. Dude, Lip's on a tear. Lip is OG. I literally, if you didn't watch my video on my awards, I did just give him MVP for 2023. So I think he, he has to win that one. Alarm. I think Alarm had a better career than Monk has had so far. Leave and Fearless. Um, Leave, the thing that Leave has going for him is MVP. Um, Fearless has a lot more tournaments. He's won a grand finals. He's been a consistently solid contributor to all of his teams. I think Fearless might be the best main tank that has played in the game at this point in time. Um, so I'm going to go with Fearless. It's close, but I'm going to go with Fearless. Void over Creative for sure. All right. Top 16. Chio versus Fate. This is where the Chio run ends. I'm sorry, Chio. Fate. I mean, legend of the game. He's won so many tournaments. He's been a huge part of... of so many successful teams in his career. Twilight over Moth, for sure. Um, that's a no-brainer to me. Carpe and Choi. Oh! It's so interesting. You know, Carpe's whole career is that he never won anything. Um, but he was so good throughout it. Whereas Choi Yobin won two awards. May have been underappreciated by the community for, for some of that run. Um, this is tough. I think Carpe was the face of the league, but... If we're going by careers, and I've been doing that for, for most of this time, I think I like Carpe better as a player. I enjoyed his career more. I enjoyed watching him more. But I think career-wise, if we're going off of that, I think you have to go Choi Oven for this one. All right. Violet versus Smurf. God. These matchups are getting so tough. But Violet won. Won. Grand Finals. Mid-Season Madness Finals. I mean, come on now. Smurf obviously won in Season 2 and in Season 3 and won a tournament in Season 5, uh, but I think Violet is... Every team Violet's on is really good. Uh, always. <sighs> Whoo! Whoo! My! This one hurts the soul. Uh, arguably the best off-tank and arguably the best main tank to ever play the game. Uh, matched up here. Players, they both were on Dallas Fuel together in Season 5. Phenomenal. And Season 4 as well, but they won the Grand Finals in Season 5. Um, this is tough. I think the edge for me, and it's very close, but I think the edge for me goes to just kind of career accomplishments. Um, you know, Fearless won Grand Finals MVP in Season 5 was a Winston medal. He didn't play a lot for the rest of Season 5 because it was a lot of, like, Zarya and Junker Queen, and Hanbin was phenomenal uh, for that. But Fearless was also successful on Shanghai in Season 3. Um, obviously, he was a part of the bad Shanghai roster in 2018, but I, I don't give that too much credit. Um, just because of how good he was in Season 3 and in Season 4 and in Season 5 and still in Season 6, and he's had a better year this year. Um, Hanbin's still very good, and I hate to not pick Hanbin um, because it's very, very close. But I think career-wise, Fearless just edges Hanbin a little bit more. So I'm going to go with him. Oh, oh, man. Lip. Lip is getting the worst matchups. Ones that he's winning by the, the skin of his teeth for me. Um, look, I love both of these players. I think you could pick either of them. 
the fact that Lip has to go against Profit is unfortunate because uh, I think you have to go with Profit because they both have won Grand Finals before. Um, they both won Grand Finals MVP, uh, but Profit sustained success over not just the Overwatch League, but also before the Overwatch League as well. I think you have to give it to Profit. Uh, both phenomenal players, though. Either one of them could be the guy that you go with. It's close. Void and Alarm. This is where Alarm's run ends. Thank you, Alarm, for everything. Void. Legend of the game. Can't can't really say much there. Izayaki Fleta. Fun one. Obviously, Fleta won MVP in 2020. I don't know how much I... I, I think that's the MVP that I most disagree with that we've ever had. If I'm being honest with you, I think Izayaki was has been a really good player his entire career. Uh, the fact that Fleta's season six and season five arguably not very good, Izayaki is my pick here. All right, we're down to the final eight players. Oh my, this should be the finals. Profit versus Violet should have been the finals. No, no. Well, whoever wins this is going all the way, guys. Uh, hate to break it to you. The rest of it doesn't really matter. Um, this sucks. This is awful. You know, I've forever been on the Profit is the GOAT. And I think there was an argument made when Plat Chat did this that Profit might be the GOAT of Overwatch and Violet's the GOAT of the Overwatch League because Violet, since joining the Overwatch League in 2019, I mean, he's been a winner. Every team he's been on has been good because of him. Um, he's been kind of a central piece. He leaves Shock, Shock backline falls apart, which I think that really shows you how good he's been throughout his career. Profit's always able to kind of find success on his team, obviously. He's won everywhere he's been. He won on London. He won on Seoul Dynasty. It's really, really close. Um, I... I love both of these players' careers. Man, they're both phenomenal. Um, you know, it comes down to what side are you on? Who's, who's, uh, who's, whose team do you believe in more? What I think is interesting, and I think this is kind of where I'm, I'm, I'm going in mentally, is... I think Violet is both both of these things are true, I think, for Violet. He is arguably the most important piece on some of the teams he's been on. He's also been consistently on better rosters than Profit. Like this year's Houston roster is much better than this year's Seoul roster. Uh I think every San Francisco roster except for maybe season well, no, season four San Francisco roster is probably also better than the season four. Soul roster. Season two shock was better than than London. So I think Violet has been a huge part of all of his team's success. And I think they've won the way that they have because of him in a lot of cases. But I also think he's been on better teams, um, which I think helps him out quite a lot as well. That's not a point against Violet. I think that the fact that he was as good as he is also made his teams a lot better. Profit to me has been consistently one of the best pieces. Um, for every team he's been on. It, it's so tough here. I honestly think... I think no matter who I pick, I'm wrong. Because I have... Eliminating either one of these players is wrong. At this point in time. Um, but you know what? I'm going to give... Because I am considering not just... Overwatch League... I'm considering Overwatch League primarily, but... I am, I am viewing stuff beyond the Overwatch League as potential tiebreakers. Uh, I'm going to give it the edge to the Profit. I think there is no wrong answer here. Um, either one of these is, is the correct answer, but I, I'm going to give the edge to Profit. Because I do think when you look at everything he's done in his career, he is arguably still one of the GOAT to the game. I think he's so good, um, and I think he's still a, a major competitor, and I think there's so much talent there. Choi versus Twilight. See, I like Twilight better as a player. He's been he's been around longer. Choi obviously won those two titles. Was very very good. Um, but to me, Twilight, the fact that his season his career has continued on through season five and still to this kind of day in season six, and he's still one of the best in the league. I'm gonna give the edge to Twilight. I like Twilight better as a player. I'm not even gonna hide it. Um, and and that's what I'm gonna give it to him. Void versus Izayaki, legends of the game. Uh, both phenomenal players. I think um, 
They both played on the, the Shanghai Dragons during the very good stretch from Season 3 to Season 5. So two phenomenal players here that you really do feel like either one of them moving on is is a huge kind of plus. But I think Void is is a little bit better. I think Izayaki has benefited a lot um, from some of the teams he's been on. I think I think when you consider also the fact that I think Void was better in Season 1 and Season 2, we didn't, Izayaki didn't really break onto the scene big time until Season 3. Season 1 and Season 2, Void was very good. Uh, so I'm going to go Void. And our final matchup here in the top eight, Fearless versus Fate. Woo! We saw this one in real time in the Season 5. Uh, you know, Shanghai got the edge. Or Season 4, I should say, 2021. Uh, but I think uh, Fearless had the better career. I think Fearless has been better, especially recently. I think the fact that Fearless was, you know, joined the league, the own 40 team, didn't win a game, basically had to grind back through contenders, and then came back and was dominant for four straight years. Fate has been very good his entire career. He's never really been dominant. Uh, I mean, he was super good at during his time in Shanghai. Um, but I don't know why they have Fate as Season 3 Shanghai. He was not on Shanghai. Fearless. That's what I go with. Close one, though. Profit versus Twilight. Give me Profit. Love Twilight, but Profit's the GOAT. Fearless versus Void. Ooh. Ooh. I feel like people are going to be upset if I pick Void here. Because I picked Fearless over Hanbin. Um, and I think Hanbin might be the best off tank ever. I think Void's had a bit of a... He's had more sustained success in his career. He's done a little bit more, but it's close, man. I think Void is such a good player, and I think he was such a huge part of the success of Shanghai in both seasons um, that they were very, very... Like, they were at the top of the world in Season 3 and Season 4. Obviously, Fearless was a part of that Season 3 squad, was not a part of that Season uh, 4 squad. So they did play together, but I think when you look at kind of what they did, and they both found success without each other as well, which I think is also very important... And it's so funny because they've both had very good rosters around them. But they're very similar. Right? They played together and found success. They played apart and found success. They also had, you know, Fearless played with Void and Hanbin. Void played with, you know, Fearless and Fate. Um, you know, among other players as well, of course. Um, played with Fissure, uh, with Void. So it it's a close one, man. This one's very close. I think both of these players deserve a lot of credit for what they've done. But... What I will give the edge to is the fact that Fearless is still one of the best tank players in the world right now. Void has not been having as good of a year. He hasn't played a lot this year. So I think Fearless, his sustained success, even going into the, the single tank meta. And obviously it's been a Winston meta and that's kind of worked in his favor. I'm going to go with Fearless there. Did not expect the finals to feature Fearless, that's for sure. He is one of my favorite players of all time, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but like I said... Whoever won the matchup between Profit and Violet was probably going to be the guy who won the whole thing. So that means Profit is, for me, the Overwatch League GOAT. There we go. Profit. That's my pick. I'm not going to share my result, but there we go. That's who I picked. Um, you know what? We'll, 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 we'll save this image. Uh, I'll, I'll do that in a second here. Anyway. So there we go. That is my my thing. Let me know in the comments down below if you watched this whole thing. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is a long video, obviously, so if you did, thank you so much. Let me know who you would pick uh, if you did some. Obviously, the it's random, so it, it can be different depending on what you get. But yeah, this is fun. I enjoyed doing this. You can always do it again and get different results, which is always interesting. I mean, I think the problem is, like, once you get to the end, like, Profit, pro like, profit would win the whole thing no matter what I think I would do. Um, maybe in a week or two, I'd have a different result, uh, with the grand finals coming up, but yeah, let me know in the comments below your thoughts. Thank you so much. If you watch this whole video, um, probably won't be many more videos like this in the future, but it's possible that some of this comes later on, but yeah, that's it for today. Thank you all so much. Once again, I'm going to go do something, uh, else with my life. Uh, cause as much as I enjoyed this, wow, that took a lot of my day. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Thank you all once again. Hope you're all staying safe, staying healthy, and until next time, bye-bye.